Cracoid, conoid, coronoid. What confusing names. We need to sort them out. We're gonna start with the cracoid. The cracoid is a hooked shaped bony process which is attached to the neck of the scapula. It is considered the surgeon lighthouse. It's a landmark to avoid neurovascular injury during surgery. It's probably safe. Lateral to the coracoid, you can do the approaches to the shoulder, you can do the surgery. Medial to the coracoid, this is the danger area. This is the area where the neurovascular structures lie and you're gonna try to avoid this area. Always feel the coracoid and make sure you are lateral to it. The coracoid process is the site of attachment of several structures, the conoid and trapezoid ligament, the coracoacromial ligament, and the coracohumeral ligament. Also, it gives attachment to the conjoint tendon, which is made of the coracobrachialis and short head of the biceps muscle, in addition to the pectoralis minor muscle. The subscapularis muscle passes under the coracoid and it inserts into the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. There are two types of coracoid fractures. Fracture proximal to the coracoclavicular ligament. It's usually associated with other injuries and the treatment could be surgery. Fracture distal to the coracoclavicular ligament, just the tip, and no surgery is needed. What is subcoracoid impingement? It's an impingement of the subscapularis tendon between the coracoid and the lesser tuberosity. There is a test for that, they call it the coracoid impingement test. Clicking and pain is reproduced with passive shoulder flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. The coracoid process is also important in anchoring ligaments or tendons to the clavicle to restore the stability of the AC joint. The latter J brace tool procedure is also performed when there is bone loss from the glenoid and the patient has multiple dislocations of the shoulder. The coracoid is transferred with its attached muscles into the deficient area in the glenoid, which is usually the anterior inferior area. Now we go to the conoid. What is the conoid? It is a ligament. It is a structure. It is a part of the coracoclavicular ligament. It is a strong ligament. It keeps the clavicle and the AC joint in place. The AC joint is stabilized by the joint capsule, by the AC ligament, which prevent anterior-posterior translation, and also by the coracoclavicular ligament, which prevent vertical displacement of the clavicle. The CC ligament is the most important ligament. Injury to the CC ligament will cause vertical displacement of the clavicle and causes at least type 3 AC joint separation. Sometimes if this ligament is ruptured, the condition can become painful and chronic. The patient may need to have surgery in the form of a tendon graft to restore the stability of the AC joint. This conoid ligament and the trapezoid, of course, has a major role in stabilizing the clavicle in position close to the coracoid.
and fractures of the distal third of the clavicle show how important this ligament. So if the fracture of the clavicle in the distal third is lateral to the ligament, then the clavicle is stabilized by the ligament and the fracture usually not displaced, it is stable and no surgery is needed. If the fracture of the distal third of the clavicle is medial to the ligament or through the ligament, totally or partially, then the fracture becomes unstable and the medial clavicle becomes displaced vertically due to the pull of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This type of fracture of the distal third of the clavicle has a high incidence of non-union and it could be an indication for surgery. So how about anatomy of this ligament? The conoid is medial, the trapezoid is lateral, and you can see the distance of this ligament from the AC joint. The conoid ligament arises about 4.5 cm from the AC joint and the trapezoid arises about 3 cm from the AC joint. Coronoid process. The coronoid process is a triangular process project from the anterior proximal ulna. It's an anterior buttress of the olecranon that articulates with the trochlea and nothing inserts on its step. The process is twice as high as the olecranon tip. The coronoid process is an important structure that contains the site of insertion of the medial collateral ligament, especially the anterior oblique ligament, and also the site of insertion of the brachialis. If the coronoid process is fractured, look for elbow instability. The coronoid process is also involved in the treble triad injury, which involves elbow dislocation, radial head fracture, and the fracture of the coronoid. The lateral collateral ligament is injured. Treble triad will indicate there is a big problem. That's terrible because there is a high complication with this injury and there is also recurrence of the dislocation and also more reoperations. In this case, you're going to repair the lateral collateral ligament, you're going to fix or replace the radial head, and you're going to fix or suture the coronoid process. So let's talk a little bit about fracture of the coronoid. The isolated fracture is uncommon. When it is fractured, it's usually associated with other elbow injuries such as elbow dislocation or olecranon fracture. These are the three types that you see with coronoid process fracture. Type 1, the tip is fractured and you can treat it by early motion. The second type, less than 50% of the coronoid process is fractured. It may be unstable and it may need surgery. Type 3, more than 50% of the coronoid process is fractured. This is very unstable injury and you probably will need surgery. The intermedial facet fracture was identified as a complex injury. It is the site of attachment of the MCL, this fracture will lead to posteromedial rotatory instability. The combination of this injury is the anteromedial facet fracture, the LCL injury, and various force. If this injury is missed or not treated properly, it can lead to arthritis and instability. Anatomic reduction of the fracture and fixation is important. Thank you very much for listening. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.